Uh, it's great to be with you. Um, uh, just on this first page, the big theme I'd make is uh, uh, industry for industry, which basically says uh, every industrial company is going to have to be dedicated to making a transformation to being a software and analytical company. I'm 32 years with GE, you know, basically people said, okay, you're a, you're a machine head, you sit over there. The software people sit over here. Uh, they're going to come in and tell you what to do and how to do it, and, and you're going to be a, maybe a participant, but you're not going to lead this discussion. Uh, those days are over. Uh, the world of the uh, uh, industrial world is going to change dramatically, and it's going to be changing from the standpoint of having sensors, controls, getting real-time data, and who uses that data the best, I think is increasingly going to determine who's successful in the 21st century. So, so just from the outset, if you don't take anything uh, more away to, uh, in the next couple of days, if you go to bed tonight in an industrial company, uh, you're going to wake up tomorrow morning a software and analytical company. And this is one of the biggest changes of this uh, of this generation. Maybe, maybe start with the environment. People always, uh, you know, when you run GE, you see a lot of different things. People always want to know about uh, the economy. And I'm like most CEOs, we got, we're the guys that got B's in economics in college. So you can take all this with a grain of salt. And my first piece of advice is don't watch much TV or read papers and things like that, because you can make yourself awfully bummed out if you want to. Uh, but I think we're basically in a pattern coming out of the financial crisis. Uh, where every year is more or less the same as the one before, and that's characterized by relatively slow economic growth globally uh, with a ton of volatility. So the U.S. is better than uh, uh, any time since the financial crisis. Uh, places like uh, China continue to grow, but it's more of a micro versus a macro story. Uh, Resource-rich countries are still investing. I, look, I was in... Uh, uh, Southeast Asia last week and Australia, you know, uh, Indonesia is growing 5%, Malaysia is growing 6%, Australia is growing 2%. You, you know, the, so there's just pockets of growth uh, uh, across the world, and innovation is just changing our world in many different ways. Uh, on the, the headwinds, you know, kind of 40% uh, of the world, which is Europe and, uh, and Japan, still quite sluggish. Uh, just a ton of unrest and regulation and things like that that, that are just going to be things business people are going to have to deal with for a long time. So, you know, I just learned, I'd learned to love the world we're in today because we're going to be in it for a while. And, uh, and I think the best companies, both small and big, are the ones that are going to be investing accordingly. And you're going to have to make your own growth, manage risk, but uh, there's plenty of opportunities uh, still out there ahead. So that's just an economic uh, backdrop. Uh, as a company, big company, so G's, you know, more than $150 billion in revenue. We're the world's biggest infrastructure company, uh, probably the most profitable industrial company in the world. And, and uh, we focus on big, high-tech infrastructure products. We're in financial services, really lending money to small and medium-sized businesses. That's really what, what G is about. But in order for us to be successful, we've got to invest in big themes. And I'd say across the company, uh, the three big themes we're investing in today are just the whole energy transition, uh, particularly driven by natural gas, both in North America and around the world. Uh, we think the nature of manufacturing is changing dramatically, and, and we continue to invest in our own supply chain or with our suppliers, but you know, compared to where we were in manufacturing in this country 10 or 20 years ago, uh, today is much different. Uh, new automation tools, uh, 3D printing, additive manufacturing, novel processes and materials, the role of information and analytics on the factory floor that most of you in this room understand, really changing the, the role of uh, manufacturing. And, and what we call the industrial internet, and, and that's really what I'm gonna talk about for the rest of this morning, which is just the application of connectivity and analytics and tools in the industrial setting. We think these are three of the big waves uh, in this era, and none more important than the uh, industrial internet. And then just the way we run the company is different today. Uh, simpler, leaner, faster, uh, to be able to support all of you and the businesses that, that are important for the company going forward. So this is just uh, uh, kind of some of the new ideas, but more importantly, uh, I'm gonna bear in now for the rest of this morning on, on talking about the industrial internet, which is something we really as a company have been working on for probably the last uh, five years. So the headlines I would give you is that 
Uh, first and foremost, the nature of technology is changing. And it's changing by combining material science, which is what G's worked on uh, since Edison, uh, with analytics, which is just uh, changing uh, the world we live in today. So uh, the product in many ways, the machine is kind of the table stakes. It's, it's, it's the foundation. But, but those machines are now surrounded with analytics. Uh, the plane, you're gonna, let's say you fly from Orlando back to Chicago, 70% uh, of the planes are gonna have a GE engine on them. The GE engine represents literally decades of physics and material science experience inside our company. Uh, that engine is now surrounded by 30 sensors. Those sensors are gonna probably uh, acquire a terabyte of data uh, you know, in that flight, an incredible amount of data. And that data is gonna be about the wear of the blades, the fuel consumption, the heat of the engine, uh, the stress, and, and uh, that is the world today. So the nature of technology has changed, first and foremost. Two is this notion that information today uh, needs to drive outcomes. And in the case of GE, it's information created by uh, let's say a trillion dollar installed base of our products around the world. Uh, last night I was in Cleveland and I was meeting with, um, you know, probably 2,000 healthcare executives that, that were there at a conference uh, by the Cleveland Clinic. And healthcare is an industry, as you guys know, where there's just a million challenges as it pertains to uh, cost, quality, and access. And it accumulates an incredible amount of information but they haven't been able to transform that information first into, into data, then into analytics, and then into outcomes. And, and what we see in the world we live in today is the extreme need to bridge from the information that these assets can, can acquire into the outcomes that people want. And by outcomes, I mean uh, no unplanned downtime, improve, improving fuel performance, uh, things like that. And, and if, if I give you the way, when I go talk to, talk about the industrial internet to an oil and gas CEO or an airline CEO or a, a hospital CEO, I leave marketing phrases like industrial internet at the door and I talk about no unplanned downtime. And I guarantee you, if you know how to talk about no unplanned downtime when you're, you're with the CEO of an oil and gas company, they're going to listen to you. And if you talk about the industrial internet, if it's the CEO of an oil and gas company, they're going to throw your ass out, right? <laughs> so, so I've learned how to stay in the office and hang around, you know? And that to me is, is, you know, these ideas have to drive outcomes. And lastly, no one company is going to do this by, you know, on their own. Uh, there's going to end up being collaboration. Our vision for this maybe starts with GE assets, but it doesn't end with GE assets. And so we have a notion of connectivity. We have a notion of taking whatever we do from an operating platform, uh, whether it's a prophecy or prediction or anything we do, and make it able to push across uh, uh, all the assets that are in a customer's operation. So think about the industrial internet, think about it on these three levels. Technology's changed, information has to be turned into outcomes, and collaboration, security, partnerships are absolutely key in terms of everything, everything we do. Uh, this is the industrial internet, just kind of uh, everything I've learned in the five or six years that we've been leading this inside GE about what's important and, and how it has to be delivered and, and the, the main ideas. Um, machines are smarter, but machines matter, right? I, I think sometimes uh, when I am in Silicon Valley, you know, there's a notion, if you're in a software company, that machines don't count. In the world that we live in, in the industrial world, machines count, right? The knowledge of failure mode, material science, this is incredibly important and very foundational to the in industrial internet. Enabling technologies are really sit between the machine and the intelligence and the brain, and this world is moving quickly it's not necessarily, I mean, we are a big participant in it, but there's a, a lot of technology in sensors and controls and, and uh, 
uh, robotics and artificial intelligence and these enabling technologies are rich. We're investing like mad, but it's, uh, it's extremely important. And then big data, operating systems, uh, uh, analytics. And so these three need to be packaged. Smart machines, uh, uh, getting real time, access to real time data, and being able to model that data and turn it into outcomes. These are the three components of the industrial internet. And uh, we've invested probably in the last couple of years about a billion dollars just in this space, a lot more on the machines, but just in the industrial internet because we believe that if you harness these three things, uh, you can drive real capability. And we believe GE is uniquely positioned to do these three things. A software company is going to come at it from the analytics, but it's not going to have the machines. It's our intention to have the machines and go through the analytics. And then you have to transpose those into things that add value to the customer. And these are both from an asset standpoint, things are going to make the asset work better, more reliable, more efficient, safer. And things are going to make the operation perform better. So this is how the assets work together. This is uh, uh, productivity and maintenance. It's, it's, again, lower cost and efficiency. And these are the kind of outcomes that we want to try to deliver. We basically uh, have uh, launched uh, more than 40 what we call predictivity offerings in this space. And, and this is harnessing the three levels into making the assets perform better, making the operations perform better. And we talk about the power of 1%. So, what Jim said earlier is we're using some of the same technology of social media. Social media basically is about connecting hundreds of millions of users. I mean, when you read about a, a Facebook or, or, or a company like that, it is harnessing you know, hundreds of millions of people and aggregating that and, 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 and allowing for uh, commercial transactions and things like that. The industrial internet is really what we call the power of one. If you look at the GE installed base, let's say, of jet engines, and we can improve the fuel efficiency of that installed base of jet engines by 1%. The fuel efficiency of 1% is worth $3 billion of profit to the airlines around the world, $3 billion. If an oil and gas company can improve capital efficiency by 1%, it's worth tens of billions of dollars over time. So small changes in the industrial setting, giving the value of the equipment and the assets are worth tens of billions of dollars. So that, in the end, is something to keep in mind when you think about the industrial internet. And, and when you hear us talk about the power of one, that's, that's really what we mean. So again, uh, what you're going to hear about the next couple of days and, and, and what's really important is uh, assets under management, asset, asset performance management, and building uh, a technology around, uh, around the asset itself, and, and, and then building that into enterprise capability as well. And we're trying to drive outcomes as, as we surround the asset, it, whether it's reliability or cost reduction or fuel performance or profitable growth. And the investments we've made are really uh, down below. We've, we've uh, invested, uh, we had about, when we started this, we had about 10,000 software engineers inside the company. Uh, we added to that, uh, let's say 1,200 people just dedicated to the industrial internet. This is in a center in California. We're now globalizing that platform around the world. Uh, this is a company that's done a lot of acquisitions, but our, our really essential aspect here is that this is a make versus buy type of strategy. So we wanna, we wanna acquire people. We wanna put them in a GE setting. We wanna work with partners. And, and so we're developing a, a Predix, which is the operating platform. This is going to allow people to have security, to be able to write their own uh, applications, to be able to, to leverage uh, data science and technologies like that. It's going to be able to access uh, the cloud or be used uh, with edge computing out in the field, and then offer the things that are important with assets, so remote monitoring and diagnostics, uh, predictive maintenance, operations intelligence, asset lifecycle management, the things that our customers value. Uh, we want to open up Predix to allow other people to, to write applications on it, not just GE. 
So we're gonna treat this in maybe a different way than we would have done this in the past. And, and in the end, you know, as we, as we uh, have a good operating platform, we can write value added uh, applications, we can uh, deliver customer outcomes, this ultimately is how uh, uh, this will be delivered. Uh, we have, uh, as a company, probably 200, almost $200 billion of long-term service agreements in the core verticals that GE's in today and airlines and energy and things like that. But with a lot of people in this room, you know, we can extend Predix into food processing or the industries you're in, and that's really our intention. Our intention is to uh, build a capability that's broader than just GE, that's, that's robust and fast and can be used in, in a pretty dramatic way, where we bring our industrial expertise, our controls expertise, and make it uh, meaningful for our customers. What I thought I'd do is uh, just do a deep dive in one industry, because uh, you know there's a lot of people in the room that can present this better than I could in terms of uh, the depth of the technology. But what I want to give you a sense for today from, from my perspective is that this is real. It's happening. It's not a cartoon. It's not PowerPoint. This is actually uh, uh, quite important and happening uh, in, in front of our eyes. And so what I picked is the rail industry because I think it's something that most of you can identify with. Big customer of ours, but probably a big supplier to almost everybody in this room. And, we always start with the market, right? So we, we start with what's going on in the industry. Uh, it's a big industry in North America. Uh, the railroads have experienced an incredible uh, surge in demand. A tough winter has uh, hurt the rail, uh, uh, their capability and their uh, on-time delivery. And, and uh, you know, they have a, a metric called velocity. And velocity is really their metric for asset utilization and a relatively small improvement in velocity would drive you know, massive oppor opportunities uh, for the industry. So they know how to measure, like most industrial companies, you know, they know how to measure what uh, the industrial internet can deliver, right? And they can see it in a very tangible way. So they want on-time delivery, they want a asset utilization, fuel performance, things like that. And we know very much uh, what, to, uh, uh, what to deliver in terms of velocity and uh, dwell, locomotive productivity, fuel performance. Uh, when I go do, let's say I go do a sales call on Union Pacific, I have basically those metrics on locomotive productivity, dwell, network velocity, and fuel efficiency. I have a dashboard that I can take when I do that call that says, Here's what's going on. Here's, here's where we're failing. So there's great transparency in most industrial businesses between how companies get measured and, and what the outputs uh, really are. So I, we have an example like this for oil and gas, for airlines, for all the businesses we're in. We try to put ourselves in the shoes of the customer's CFO or their CIO. We tear apart their uh, annual reports, their income statements to say, okay, you know, how do we take an idea like the industrial internet and make it so it's fundable inside a company because somebody's metrics are getting better, the, the maintenance leader, the operations leader. So this is the, the look at, uh, at, uh, at rail. And so locomotive, you know, we, we look at the locomotive, we think that's beautiful, right? This is a GE locomotive, of course, but <laughs> we think, we look at stuff like this and say, this is sexy, right? This is a, and, and, but it's not just the diesel engine and all that, you know, that we're used to. This particular engine, I think, has 80 sensors. So you get uh, continuous uh, data feed. You can do it on a mobile uh, basis. You've got advanced controls, so you've got, uh, more sophisticated controls than ever before. So you basically can make optimization almost like an airplane uh, without even the operator uh, has to intervene on those. Um, we, we've surrounded now, these things sit, I mean a lot of you have seen this in Chicago and things like that. These locomotives can sit in a yard and they don't really know which ones are ready uh, when the maintenance has all been done. So we can actually unleash a, kind of a service robotic, a, a little mini drone 
that can go around a rail yard and take pictures of the wheels. Uh, wheel failure, what's called a set out to a locomotive, is just about the worst thing. It's an, it's an uncontained failure, right? So actually knowing the state that the wheels are in are incredibly important. And then automated decisioning. You're, you're able to take it real time and make smart decisions about uh, what to do. You know, if you, can, if you can repair things for cause and not just on a annual maintenance cycle, right? In other words, if you can repair things just when they need to be repaired, but not, you know, just random, you know, be, because the schedule says do it in 12 months or 18 months, that again for a, 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 a rail company is tens of millions of dollars of productivity every year. So, so it's not your, it's not your father's locomotive, you know? It, this, is a, this is a completely different asset in terms of uh, where we are today. And then we, we, we go out to our customers and say, okay, now here's the way you can optimize this asset, right? So you've got uh, what's called a trip optimizer, which is a, a really kind of real-time controls to model fuel. Uh, with CSX, we're, we're able to reduce their fuel usage by 7%. And this is, again, a combination of hardware and software solutions. And emissions are huge in terms of uh, uh, the way this industry works. And you can get emissions credit. So you can, again, have software and hardware tools. So a uh, <laughs> big portion of the industrial internet is going to be ways to combine what I would call software-enabled solutions they're going to be able to take uh, assets and make small changes on the assets. And so this is happening real time today, and, and a lot of people in this room are going to be working on things like that. The power ultimately is talking about the entire uh, enterprise of a customer. So not just GE assets, but every asset that the customer has, uh, the dynamics of workflow, and uh, one of the things we pioneered with uh, Norfolk Southern was called the Movement Planner. Uh, the Movement Planner is really the air traffic control system for a, a railroad. And so this is a more sophisticated piece of both hardware, software, and workflow, change in workflow. But this is a massive uh, performer in terms of where uh, the customer is. This has been able to improve asset utilization. You know, the metric they use is velocity. Velocity is the kind of average miles that each locomotive travels each day. One mile for one railroad is worth $200 million profit. It's about 10 or 20% of profit in the entire industry. So, so, so these industrial internet tools, you know, again, think of no unplanned downtime, asset optimization, enterprise optimization, and I, we could show you examples in the airline industry and in, in food and beverage industry, and, and uh, this is kind of where we're heading. This is where we want to go in all the GE businesses, and this is where we want to go with you uh, beyond, is taking these assets, uh, uh, investing in asset performance management, and then turn it into enterprise performance management over time. And I guarantee you that uh, there's probably nothing more important to me running the company than to see how uh, we make this uh, transition. We're working with a ton of customers uh, in this room on e examples in your setting as it pertains to, again, asset optimization. Uh, Total is a big oil and gas company where we've been able to, to use uh, some of the solutions to drive no unplanned downtime. Laxness in chemistry, again, we've always had a good footprint in the process and process control. And so a, a series of things, whether it's with smart signal or prophecy or the, the tools and intelligent platforms to work on schedule, reliability, efficiency, and uh, all the things we're doing uh, for the people here. So this is real. Uh, analytics is invading the industrial setting. And GE is going to bring a suite of solutions uh, into this setting to, uh, to, to really deliver better results uh, for all of you. Now, we eat our own cooking, right? So uh, we're, I'm not just here to, uh, uh, to sell you in terms of uh, uh, what we're doing, but also inside the company, uh, we're just like you, right? We have a CIO. We have manufacturing leaders. Uh, they're important clients of mine as well in terms of the company. And we have our own 1%. So we are a big company. We invest in IT. We invest in analytics and security. Uh, we buy almost $100 billion a year of stuff, 
inside the company. So we have a ton of things that we do inside the company. $12 billion of working capital, probably $20 billion in net P&E inside the company. And our outcomes have to be to get lower product costs, uh, improve our margins, enhance, you know, we have uh, almost 50,000 researchers and engineers inside the company, enhancing their productivity is key, be faster and safer. So, you know, we absolutely believe that every industrial company needs to be a software and analytical, analytical company, and we are living proof that, uh, that these things have to, uh, have to take place. So inside our manufacturing facilities, we buy about $63 billion of direct materials across 400 facilities around, and we're really working on the smart factory as one of the big initiatives that our CIO is leading inside the company. Uh, we were laughing earlier, I was sitting next to the CIO from Anadarko, and I was bragging about taking our ERPs down from like uh, 600 down to 34, and they have one, so he was saying, hey, you're not so good, you know? <laughs> so I'm not worthy, there's probably, but, but for me that sounded pretty good, you know? We're big company, multiple divisions, lots of acquisitions. But this is, uh, you know, the, the desire to drive, I'd say, uh, more standardization in the name of flexibility, right? So I think like a lot of you, we recognize that in, in order to uh, enable this, this is key. Uh, unlocking big data inside the company, so our, um, our factories are now filled with sensors. You know, all of our milling machines or machining, uh, big machining capability now are all uh, getting the same data that we're trying to work with you on, either delivered by Prophecy or other tools inside the company, and really powering uh, what we call the brilliant factory. So we've got the combination of simplified ERPs, uh, big data lakes uh, with our suppliers. So we have multiple suppliers. We're building th these huge data pools that are really allowing us to, to figure out we buy one component in one division and another component in another division and we've never been as good as we need to be. I know some of you are our suppliers and you wouldn't disagree with this for a second about if you call in one G division versus another. You know, occasionally I'll see someone and say, do you guys ever talk to each other? <laughs> and the answer is sometimes rarely, but uh, with, with the data performance, we don't really need to anymore. We can kind of see it real time. And then, uh, like I said, sensor enablement uh, throughout the company. And so we've got, uh, we're doing, more, you know, kind of examples of all this across the company, but we basically have taken uh, four of our biggest facilities, places like Greenville, South Carolina, and we're kind of going along on what we call the brilliant factory. And, you know, our goal is to really, at the end of the day, take about 20% of the cost out of a gas turbine by really combining, you know, the, the kind of uh, data, you know, we're, uh, one of our uh, vice chairmen who looks out over this basically says, you know, we have basically somewhere between 15 and 20 of these uh, $2 million plus types of equipments uh, shut down at any given point in time because of maintenance or unplanned downtime. So we have our own unplanned downtime issue. Uh, but nonetheless, I just wanted to, to give you a sense that all the things I talk about forward looking in the company, we're also investing in inside the company as ways to drive speed and, uh, speed and productivity. So um, I would just end. Uh, Machines and analytics uh, perfectly uh, are, are permanently connected. Uh, I'm 32 years with GE. Uh, all of our senior leaders are becoming uh, as expert as they possibly can be on analytics. Uh, this is not something that you can sit on the sidelines and pretend like it's not for your company, it's not for you. Uh, this has to be led by uh, the CIO in many cases but also has to be led uh, from uh, inside and outside your company. As we've gone through this, we have brought people into GE from other companies, from Oracle, Cisco, other companies, because we knew we couldn't get to where we needed to get to on our own. So cultural transformation, talent transformation is, is absolutely critical as part of this, but, it, but if you stick your head in the sand, uh, this is really, this is one you can't afford to miss, I would say, and, and really key. Uh, this is the next wave of productivity. I, I, I actually think that the, uh, 
when you think about how to unleash new kind of ideas on productivity, the, the aspect of getting better fuel performance, better uptime, all the things that are part, uh, this is where you're gonna get it versus maybe the last round of information technology was pure labor savings or things like that. This is gonna give you big time on maintenance materials and areas like that. And, and this again, I think is uh, uh, the nature of collaboration as it pertains to uh, industry for industry. So all of us have had software suppliers. This is matching information uh, with analytics, with data, with outcomes. So in order to get from information to outcomes, you, you need to have an industrial context. You, you, you're not gonna be able to get that, my hypothesis, with only a software supplier or only a systems integrator, right? You're gonna have to be able to march from one end to the other, and in order to do that, you're gonna have to have a combination of process skills, IT skills, but the machine. You're gonna to have to have people that know how the machine is used in the setting you're in. So I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a huge initiative inside the company. We got a good team uh, that's here to work with you, our, both our partners and our customers on it, and uh, have a great meeting. Thank you.